Hello everyone, Sister Shauna here, and I'd like to welcome you to my kitchen here on Love in the Pot. Let's get started. Today, we will be preparing some fresh juices. This is a great way to increase your nutritional intake and consume more raw, nutrient-rich foods. Okay, I'm talking dark leafy greens, foods and fruits that are high in vitamins and nutrients, like some citrus items, some key components to have is some sort of dark leafy green and a form of citrus to give you a kick of acid, as well as something to give you a balance in flavor, whether that's a little nod of sweetness or you're looking for a little punch, like fresh ginger. And keep in mind that you use ingredients that are going to be beneficial to you. Do your research, find out what your food can offer you, and try to utilize some of those components. Also keep in mind what your personal dietary needs are, whether you have certain restrictions or things that you'll need to keep in mind. Always, always consult with your doctor, of course, if you're on medications, because there are certain foods that have reactions to meds, like for instance, some medication react with grapefruit. So keep those things in mind. Do it to your preference and your personal needs. So today, I'm actually working with the ingredients I have on hand. I juice frequently and actually I'm on a detox right now. So here's a little funny nod. That bread pudding that I made, I couldn't even eat it, y'all was detoxing. So at any rate, I'm training myself to be more disciplined and I'm using things of this nature to help incorporate more nutrient-rich foods in my busy lifestyle. I recommend that you do this as well, especially those parents that are on the go, you're busy, you don't have time during the week, but well, you can set aside, you know, a day or so during your busy week to give yourself some healthy prep. This may take you, realistically, if you're doing large quantities, um, at least, and I usually do a lot. If I'm gonna go through the trouble of doing this, I typically make like three or four variations with maybe two to three jugs each so that I know I'm good for the week. However, you do what works for you. Of course, if you have a smaller household, there's absolutely no need for that. Now, keep in mind that these items are perishable, and once you work with them, they'll begin losing shelf life because it doesn't have the protection of the skin, it's been exposed to air, it's been exposed to friction, and all of these things will factor in how fast it expires. A good rule of thumb is three days, but realistically, depending on how fresh your product is, how cleanly you are, did you clean your surfaces, did you wash your hands thoroughly, did you handle your food properly, did you properly clean the food before beginning, all of these things factor into how long your product will last. So a great range really is between three to five days. Typically when I make these juices, sometimes they'll even last over a week, but I would not go with that as a rule of thumb many factors determine how long it lasts, as I said before. So at any rate, um, I have pre-rinsed all my vegetables and my fruits. I have a sink of cold water that has apple cider vinegar. Of course, I wash the sink beforehand um, with antibacterial soap, rinsed it out, and then I filled the sink with cold water and added about a quarter cup of apple cider vinegar and honestly I'll just let these hang out right here until I'm ready to use them however keep in mind they were pre rinsed before putting them in that solution the apple cider vinegar is just gonna kill any other bacteria that's remaining on the skin so that's the step I recommend that you take especially for things that aren't prepackaged and have not been cleaned okay let's get started so I have some things that are already pre fabricated. I have celery. That's about four stalks that have been cleaned and roughly chopped into big chunks. I have my herbs that I'm going to incorporate. I have ginger. I'm not even going to bother peeling any of these things because my juice is going to take care of it. It's designed for the job. However, prepare your fruits and veggies according to your juices specifications. Um, I have, I believe this is a 
Revell machine. So that's what I'm working with. It has a back compartment that traps all the pulp. So I have a trash receptacle close by that I can dump the pulp into as it gets full. Also, I have jars stacked and ready. When you buy drinks at the store and they come in these nice glass jars, keep them. Recycle them and repurpose them. I've washed them and they are ready to go. Of course, when I'm done, I will label all of them so I know what's what. And we're going to begin. I'm gonna make three varieties today and we're gonna start with the apple melon blend. I have some chunked watermelon here that was left over that we didn't finish up. So I'll be using that. And I'm going to include in that drink apple, melon, lime, mint, celery, and ginger. So before we begin, we will prepare the components going in it. I have my limes. Now, these may not be the best looking limes, but all I'm going for really is the essence of it, the juice that's in it, the pulp and everything else is gonna be discarded, so it really doesn't matter. A key point too is make sure you have a sharp knife so that you don't hurt yourself trying to cut. Most people cut themselves with dull knives. So be prepared, need some floss, do your things decently in order. I'm gonna curve my fingers, clamp down on this line, and I'm just gonna roughly cut these things into quarters. That's pretty much what I'll be doing for all my components because the juice is really doing the bulk of the work. Ginger is in nubs, but I can take them down a little smaller. And ginger is naturally hot, and of course it has lots of great healing properties for your body. It'll help you get over a cold, it'll help settle your tummy, it will also help with that digestive tract. So ginger is one of those superfoods that can really help you in the long run. Consume it often. Apple. Remember earlier I said I have fruit soaking in that water and vinegar blend. I'm gonna give them a quick rinse to get the vinegar off. And we will just quarter the apples. We'll start with three since the melon's already sweet. I don't need to bother coring or anything like that because the machine's gonna take care of the bulk of the work. And when you're doing things like this, it's great to have little helpers, like the, the kids will be great at helping you cut down some of these things while you're blending. Of course, safety first. Teach them the way. And give them tools that won't cause harm to themselves. Mint. The mint, I'm not gonna do anything special with that. I'm just gonna break it up. This mint's actually from my garden. I have a plethora of it. And I should have picked more to use, but hey, I'm working with what's in my fridge. This is how I live. It's real. I'm showing you how you can make it happen with what you have on hand. You can create great flavor combinations just considering the product that you have. So I know that the lime and the melon go well together. Mint will complement those ingredients well too. And the ginger will give a nice kick and the apple will help balance out the heat of the ginger. So when you are putting your flavor components together, just keep in mind your flavor profile and how to balance those flavors together. And also too, just in case I need an extra boost, I have bottled lemon juice and lime juice on hand as well, and I'll taste everything and adjust before I bottle it up completely. Also, I think I want to incorporate a little cucumber in here and make this a really hydrating blend. We're prepped out for our first batch. Let's get into the machine. This is going to get noisy, so I'm totally going to speed through. Also, I have rind. Well, it's not really rind. It's the outer layer after peeling the rind when I'm peeling my melon. And if I know that I'm going to be juicing, I save this to incorporate in the juice. The flavor is still there. Um, it's not as sweet as the red part of the melon, but it's melon nonetheless. And it still has nutritional value. So instead of wasting, I'm going to use this too. 
way it's not going now. Let's get it going. Now, I'm not really using my machine fully as they recommend because I don't find it to be convenient. I'm just gonna rest the top on there like so. It's really important that you're working with clean hands but you're far more likely to contaminate your food when it's going to be eaten raw because there's no heat that's going to be applied to kill off bacteria that may get on the food that make it harmful and that can make you sick. So always remember to handle your food with love. You're feeding your loved ones and you do not want to bring sickness upon anyone. All my counters have been cleaned and sanitized as well, so if I lose a piece on the counter, I can actually Use it. I'm actually going to pause on my watermelon because I still have quite a bit and I, but I want to make sure I get all my flavor components in there. So I'm going to use half of everything in this batch and then I'll continue for my second jar with the remaining half and the remaining watermelon. Right, let's do it. I would have loved to put beets in this blend, but I'm all out. So I'm actually at the max level on my pitcher, so I'm going to pause my juicing and start filling up a jug. And then we will continue with the remaining ingredients for this blend. Oh, it's really refreshing. I think it could use a little more apple and a little more lime. So when I close off my pictures, I may add a hit more of lime to each one. Remember, tidy as you go. Keep your station tidy and clean and it won't get chaotic, it won't feel overwhelming, and you won't have a humongous mess at the end. I'm swing that upward so it doesn't drip everywhere, and I'm gonna strain that watermelon juice. My dishwasher's empty, so when I'm done, I can just load. If I weren't filming, I'd be able to load as I go along so cool how you have that foam at the top like it's the fresh juice latte. <laughs> See? All those foamy bubbles. Really cool. You can strain them out, but I like them. A little bit left over. Chef's treat. I'm going to do a personal jar probably for my husband to take for work in the morning. So not only did you do prep, you did something special for your husband. You're gonna get two jugs and a jar out of that batch. Perfect. At the end, I like to label so folks in the house know what's in there, but you certainly don't have to go through that trouble, particularly if it's just you, you know what's in there. We'll set these to the side and everything will get loaded up in the fridge when we're done. I turn my spout back down, put the lid back on it. I'm not even going to bother rinsing. The flavor of that concoction will be very mild incorporated with the bulk of our next set of ingredients. So it's really no need for me to go through the trouble of rinsing it out in between. Now, if you were selling it, that would be a different story, but we're not doing that. Our next concoction is going to be our citrus boost. This one is going to have fresh turmeric, fresh ginger, orange, carrot, peppers, and lemon. So let's get that guy going. I have a ton of carrots that I was blessed to receive from my church's pantry so thank you so much the lord is so good 
we have those here that I'm going to be incorporating. I, I'm going to save this parsnip for my green drink. And let's do a little fabrication on the things going in. Right, this is what fresh turmeric looks like. It looks like a weird skinny nub of ginger. And when you cut into it, this is beautiful, vivid orange. Isn't that gorgeous? It's brighter than a carrot. I don't know if the lighting is doing it justice. But at any rate, let me just warn you, <laughs> these pretty suckers are, although they are full of health benefits, all the way from skincare to, I believe they even help with cancer-fighting properties. I'm not certain, but I'm gonna look into that. However, they are going to stain your juicer or whatever else you might be using. So ever since I've juiced my first set of raw turmeric, I cannot scrub out those stains. I have four finger length pieces I'm going to use. I'm just gonna rough chop them because they're fibrous and they could kind of tatter the machine. All of my drinks are going to have ginger in them and some form of citrus. Ideally, I would like them all to have some form of fresh leafy green, but I've cooked all my fresh baby spinach and I've used up all my kale. All I have left are the herbs and I have a little bit of collards as a dark leafy green, so we'll certainly be using that today for our green blend. So, kale would be really nice in this. However, it would certainly dull out that bright, vivid color. I'm gonna grab some oranges from our vinegar solution, give them a rinse. I have four oranges and I just want to warn you the pit of these oranges because it is so thick it's quite strong oftentimes I find it makes my juice very bitter but I honestly don't mind it because I definitely want the flavor of the skin you could go through the trouble of peeling the skin off leaving the whites then peeling off the white and cutting the orange itself so that you're able to remove the white pit but I'm not going through all that trouble I'll just deal with it and balance it out with um, I have another little apple over here we'll use him to balance out that bitterness and the carrots have a natural sweetness too so the oranges are big so we'll just go in half and either in thirds or in eighths Mind you, fresh juices often separate, so as they're sitting, it may look weird. So before you drink, make sure the lid is on secure and give it a shake, and then everything will redistribute. I've run out of room on my board. I just rough cut a few carrots. We'll do more as we go, as we make room. Just continue until we get all of those ingredients in there. I have to clear the pulp from the system at the top because it was getting jammed. My machine actually gives me a, it has an indicator of an overload warning. So when it shows me that, I stop and investigate because you definitely don't want to tear up your machine. These machines aren't cheap. <laughs> okay, I just unclog the machine, wiped up and washed my hands. So I'm back, we're going to continue. We're almost done with this carrot one and then we'll move to our third variety. Remember, don't ignore the signs. If your machine is giving you that warning of an overload, don't press it. You, you may very well damage your equipment. done with our carrots here. That was about three pounds of carrots. I was just cutting as I went. May have, may have even been five pounds, but I want to say safely three. Um, doing things like this, you can really eyeball it 
a little more here and there to make the concoction that works for you or don't feel afraid to work with what you have on hand because you might come up with something fantastic. After all, how do you think great recipes are made? Someone had to try something new. Okay, I have three more apples I'm actually going to incorporate into that blend so that um, it helps to balance all the savory components I have going on in there. I believe this may be lemon verbena. I'm not sure. A sister gave these this plant to me. And she said it's mint, but it does not taste like mint. It does not smell like mint. I'm not certain, but I'm going to use it. I often put it in my teas. I do know that it's an edible herb. All right, all done with our carrot concoction. It's beautiful, it's vibrant, it's bright, it smells great. Look at it, isn't it beautiful? So now I'm gonna stir it around and give it a taste. I'm gonna try and see if I need to add a little bit more lemon juice, do I need to add more ginger? This is really the difference in having something that's nutritious and okay in flavor versus nutritious and delicious. So let's try it. You have to taste it and you have to adjust it. Oh wow, that is so good. I think I'm gonna add a little more lemon though. Mm. Love it. So I added about another teaspoon of lemon to my preference, but you adjust it to your preference. And these uh, recipes aren't concrete. They're just suggestions of things you could try. Don't feel locked in a box. You don't have to do it exactly how I did it. Try something new. Just know that there are things that you can do to add a little prep and ease in your life. Work hard one day for an easy week. If you're that, that hardworking uh, mom or you're doing this for your hard working husband, and you know that it is a food desert out there and junk is readily available and not always healthy things that are pocket efficient or pocket friendly, I should say. If you do things like this, you can do them for a fraction of the cost and get much more volume. As you can see, our watermelon concoction, we have three of these. And you could take you a thermos of that to work and know that, hey, I have something nutritious to help me get through my day. Add some plant-based protein powder in there um, to give it extra boost to keep you full longer. And know that it's something healthy that you can have on the go. If you're that, that person that doesn't have time for breakfast in the morning, well do some prep ahead of time to help yourself. And they actually have all kinds of protein powder. Um, my husband ordered one offline. It's plant-based and it has no flavor. So you could go savory or you could go sweet with that and adding it to your drinks. And it just be a neutral flavor. And hey, you'll stay full longer. And it's so pretty. Look at that. And I actually love the foamy bubbles on top. It reminds me of a latte. But this would be a healthy latte. Okay, here we go. We have one and a half of those, or one and two thirds, however you want to look at it. I'm going to tidy up my station and get ready for our final juice. All right, family, I'm back. We're in the home stretch. We're going to do our final fresh juice concoction. This blend is going to be our nod to the green machine. And as I mentioned earlier, I'm all out of the greens I would usually use. I particularly like to do this with kale or um, Swiss chard because I have that growing in my garden, <laughs> as well as baby spinach or even baby arugula. I love those dark leafy greens. They're great for something like this and they're packed with nutrients and iron. Um, but today, all I had was collards. So I'm gonna be using those as my 
leafy compound. I'm going to cut the bitterness that I know it's going to give me with some sweet components. I have some sweet red apples. I also have cucumber and I have green apples. So I'm going to add some things in there to balance it out and I'm going to taste it and adjust it accordingly so that I know I'm going to enjoy drinking it. Now, remember, do your research and see what your foods can do for you. I'm working with what I have, and here are the ingredients that I'll be using today. I'm using a parsnip. This food is, has lots of healthy nutrients for you. It looks like a albino carrot, um, but the texture is different. I will be using one of these in my green blend. I'm also going to use the two variations of apple. I have Granny Smith as well as Red Delicious. I'm using cucumber. I have culantro. This is a freaky looking plant, <laughs> but it's similar to taste in cilantro, but it grows better in the south. Cilantro is very hard to grow, and I've been able to grow this year long. It's called culantro. At the base of the plant, it has these long leaves, and then in the center, it'll sprout these little spiky things, and I'm gonna use all of it. So I'll be using that in this blend as well. And of course, as I said before, all my beverages had fresh ginger in them. So I'm just gonna start getting those ingredients ready. So just be safe, protect your fingers. I did sharpen my knife today, but these things, I want to slice. Give a rough chop to my herbs. You do want to rough chop your herbs so that they don't get stuck in the machine. They can get a little stringy and get caught up in the machine. So I just give them a rough chop. And because I know that it will do that, I'm going to sandwich it between some things. So I'll put a little bit of those. And then I'll add a little bit of the herbs and repeat. Now we're gonna start adding in some of our greens and I may add about four more apples and I may even add another cucumber depending on how much volume I get. Right now I'm only at a third. So I want to get one jug at the very least. So if I need to add those things to give me the volume, that's what I'm going to do. So I have my greens in the machine, let's feed it. Okay, I'm gonna pause and empty this machine and then we can continue. This would make great compost, by the way. Out down. I think that spider really will help you with a lot of mess. I think I'm gonna need that bar. You see, I'm not even at half yet. So I'm gonna add in another cucumber and those apples. And once I taste it, I might wanna add more ginger. parsley. I'm going to use the stems and all. I'm going to save a little bit for cooking. And then the rest of the way. Add on in. Mix it all up. It's beautiful, isn't it? I'm going to taste it and see if I want to add more lime. I think I want to add two more apples and a little more lime. I also want to add more ginger. All done. We were able to get our volume. I'm going to add a squirt more of lime to finish it up. Adjust it to your flavor profile. Mix that all in. And I don't mind the carrot remnants from the previous juice. 
in my tasting cup. Let's see if I'm happy with it before I pour it up. Oh, it's so good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Look at that. Ain't it beautiful? Perfect. Exactly that. One in the jar. And I want every bit. I'm going to tidy up. Then I'll come back and recap what we have today. I wanted to show you that you can add things in like plant-based protein. I know this is chocolate, so it wouldn't be complimentary to what we have, but you can certainly get the flavorless varieties out there, um, or even vanilla might be more neutral. But you could turn this into a breakfast by adding a scoop of protein powder. And then I even have like this superfood blend. It does taste very <laughs> vegetable-y, vegetable-ish, I don't even know if that's word. If you added it to the correct volume, you could also turn that into a meal. Okay, so there is always a way and you can get it done. You can do this. Remember, you're in control. I have my juices labeled for ease. As you can see, they're beautiful, fresh, refreshing, and relatively simple to do. The machine really does the work for you. So when you are thinking of what type of juice to make, you can most certainly research some great recipes out there. There's all kind of fun stuff on Pinterest, but you could also incorporate higher nutrient content by simply using what you have. It doesn't have to always be this extreme concept that you have to go out and buy every single component. Oftentimes, we have many of these things on hand already and you could make yourself a little boost to get you through the week. And you could most definitely purposely shop to accommodate nutrient boosts in your week. So set a day aside prep ahead and knock it out. It shouldn't take very long at all. And look at what we yielded. A lot of those fresh juices aren't cheap, especially fresh pressed without the heat. They're not cheap and you can certainly do it yourself. You could even do it in your blender, you incorporate water. Coconut water would be nice to add in because it's very hydrating or aloe vera juice and blend it up and strain it out with a fine mesh strainer. You'd probably have to do it a few times to get all that excess pulp, but it could be done, okay? There's always a way. I thank you for joining me today. I hope you will enjoy and give some of these concepts a try and know that nothing is locked in stone. You should have fun with your food and try to eat the rainbow and consider that you need to make this work for you. Now, if that means you need to keep your budget in mind, hey, you need to keep your budget in mind. If beets are too expensive that week, go for something else. There are lots of different food varieties out there that you could choose from. And I recommend you check out your local farmer's market. Oftentimes, the cost is less because you're cutting out that middleman um, in transportation and able to get more quantity for your book. So, have fun, joy. Please remember to like, share, subscribe, give me your comments, and shout out to my sister. They gave me the great idea to throw this video together for you guys because it's really not hard. It's easy. Just if you're not sure if you're going to like it, pause, taste it, and tweak it to make it palatable for you. And it's as simple as that. So I hope that this was able to help you so that you can continue to put love in your pocket.